Here we're going to find an area of a region in the plane known as a loon. So we've got two circles, one with a radius of five and the other with a radius of three. And they're overlapping like I have in the picture. And our goal is to, like I said, find the area of the loon that is defined by these two circles. And I've shaded that loon in this orange color up here. So we're going to do this by putting this in the Cartesian coordinate plane and then setting up an integral. So let's maybe go ahead and put it in the plane first. Okay, so now I've set up the Cartesian coordinate plane. So I've placed the large circle so its center is at the origin. And that makes this intersection point here of our large circle with the x-axis at the point 5 comma 0. And then next, I've pointed out that the distance from the y-axis to our smaller circle is a distance of 3. That's because the small radius is equal to 3. Next, we want to find out what this coordinate is. And that's actually not too hard to do. We can complete a right triangle where we have this as the hypotenuse and this as the right angle. So we know that this length right here is five. So we've got a three, four, five right triangle. So that makes this coordinate right here three comma four. So from this point, we can go ahead and write some equations for these circles. So we'll do the larger one first. Its center is at the origin. So that means its equation is x squared plus y squared equals radius squared, but that's going to be 25. Now, this guy right here is centered at the coordinate 0, 4 because of this calculation that we just did. So maybe we'll put a 4 over here to remind ourselves of that. And so that means we take the equation of a circle with radius 3 and we shift it up. So that's going to give us x squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 3 squared or 9. So that's the equation of our outer circle. Okay, so now we're just about ready to set up an integral which will allow us to calculate this shaded area. But before we do that, it'll be useful to build a standard formula for an integral of a certain function. So let's maybe get that formula on the board. Okay, so this integral is gonna show up in our calculation in two places. So we've got the integral of the square root of a squared minus x squared. And we're going to show that that's equal to a squared over 2 times arc sine of x over a plus x over 2 times the square root of a squared minus x squared plus a constant. But in the end, we'll have a definite integral, so this plus c won't really matter. So let's go ahead and derive this formula. So I'll write down my integral. So I've got the integral of a squared minus x squared dx. So this type of function is usually integrated with a trig substitution, and so that's exactly what we'll do. So this one usually uses the substitution x equals a times sine of theta. Notice that means dx is a times cosine of theta. Okay, but that also means that the square root of a squared minus x squared will be equal to a times cosine of theta. And I forgot my d theta up here on my dx. So now we can rewrite this integral with theta as our variable. So we'll have a squared times the integral of cosine squared theta d theta, where I took that a squared out because it's a constant. Okay, great. So next what I want to do is integrate this cosine squared theta. So there's a bunch of ways to do that, but I am fond of this way that uses integration by parts. So let's maybe see how to do that. So I'm going to multiply and divide by 2. So I'm going to write this as a squared over 2, and then the integral of cosine squared theta d theta plus the integral of cosine squared theta d theta. So notice that's twice the integral of cosine squared theta, but then we've got a 2, so that cancels. Next, I want to take one of those integrals and integrate it using integration by parts. So let's take this cosine squared and think of it as cosine theta times cosine theta d theta, and then set up my integration by parts. So this is u and this is dv. But if that's u and that's dv, then du will be the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine, and v will be the antiderivative of cosine, which is plus sine. 
So that means we can apply our integration by parts formula to that second integral and we'll have the following equation. So we'll have a squared over two, then we have the integral of cosine squared theta d theta, and then Again, using the integration by parts formula, we'll have u times v, so that'll be plus cosine theta sine theta, and then minus v du, but again, the minus sign is built into the derivative of cosine, so that will cancel out with the one that's in the formula for the integration by parts, so that'll give us plus the integral of sine squared theta d theta, like that. Okay, nice. So next, we're gonna take this sine squared theta and rewrite it as one minus cosine squared theta. But that opens up some cancellation. So we can take this integral of cosine squared and cancel it with the integral of cosine squared, which we gain from rewriting sine squared as one minus cosine squared. Next, we can take the antiderivative of d theta and we'll get just theta. And that leaves us with a squared over two. And then let's see what we have. We have the integral of uh, d theta, which gives us theta, and then plus cos theta times sine theta. Now we've got to rewrite this in terms of our x variable. And we can do that with our original substitution. So notice if x equals a sine, then x over a is equal to sine theta, meaning that theta is equal to the arc sine of x over a. Okay, that's good. And then next, we see that a times cosine theta is a squared minus x squared under the square root. But that tells us that cosine theta is equal to the square root of a squared minus x squared all over a like that. And then furthermore, like I said, sine theta is x over a. So inputting all of those quantities, so the quantity for theta given by this, the quantity for cosine given by this formula, the quantity for sine given by this formula, we'll have that this is equal to a squared over two times arc sine of x over a plus x over two times the square root of a squared minus x squared, and then plus a constant for our constant of integration. But now this expression right here is exactly what we wanted to end up with for this integral. And now we're ready to use this integral that we built in order to calculate our goal area. So notice we can just do this as the area between two curves where this describes our top curve, this x squared plus y minus four squared equals nine, and this x squared plus y squared equals 25 describes our bottom curve. But we'd probably like to solve each of those for y just so that we can like appropriately set up an integral. So here we can let y equal the square root of 25 minus x squared, and really it's plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared, but since everything is happening above the x-axis, we only need the positive part here. So maybe I'll put a little dotted arrow up here just to point out that that's only the positive part. Then we can do the same kind of thing here, and we'll get y equals four plus the square root of nine minus x squared. And again, we took the positive part of the square root, so we just have the top half. So notice our top curve is this four plus the square root of nine minus x squared, and our bottom curve is described by the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then we need to integrate from this intersection point to this intersection point. But notice we have symmetry involved here, so all we really need to do is integrate from zero to this intersection point right here, which has an x value of three, and then double it to get the area that we want. So let's go ahead and do that. So the area that we want is two times the integral from zero to three of the equation of the top curve minus the equation of the bottom curve. So that's gonna be four plus the square root of nine minus x squared minus the square root of 25 minus x squared, like that. And then we have dx. So again, we've got top curve minus bottom curve. 
Now we can apply this formula that we derived and we're almost done actually. So here we have two and then this is going to give us four times x plus we can take the antiderivative of that nine minus x squared under the square root using this formula where a is equal to three. So that gives us nine over two arc sine of x over three plus x over two times the square root of nine minus x squared. So let's maybe notice that that is the antiderivative of this portion. Now we're gonna have something similar for the antiderivative of this portion. So let's write down what that will give us. So that's gonna give us minus 25 over two, and then we have arc sine x over five minus x over two, the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then we need to take all of this and evaluate it from zero up to three. So let's see what we get when we evaluate this at three. So again, we have the two out front of everything. Plugging three in here will give us 12, and then we'll have plus nine over two, arc sine three over three, which is arc sine of one, and then we'll have plus, so three over two, times the square root of nine minus nine, so that cancels out, that's pretty nice. And then we have minus 25 over two, and then arc sine of three over five, and then minus three over two, the square root of 25 minus nine, so that's the square root of 16, which is four. And then we have to plug in zero, but notice if we plug in zero, we get zero everywhere. Four times zero, arc sine of zero is zero. We have zero here, zero here, and zero there. So all of that cancels. So we're left with this quantity right here. Now we can start evaluating this. So notice this is equal to zero, so that's nice. The arc sine of one is equal to pi over two, so that's well known. And then this part right here can be simplified to six just by canceling that four with the two in the denominator. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start simplifying some things. So here we'll have 12 minus six times two, so that'll give us another 12. And then this two, can distribute through and cancel this two, leaving us with nine pi over two. So we've got plus nine pi over two. And then this two can distribute through to get, kill this two, and that's gonna give us minus 25 arc sine of three over five. And that's the, the final value for this area.